Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is one of the most successful pop culture franchises of all time and has come a long way since it first began as a comic book in 1984. The success of the comics gave way to a television series, followed by movies and even action figures, and this franchise has introduced us to numerous strange alien species and mutant characters over time. In fact, our titular protagonists are anthropomorphic turtle mutants who often have run-ins with several strange aliens and mutants across the universe, and today we shall explore every last one of them. But before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you and let's begin. But if you misbehave, back you go. Antarians. Hailing from a planet that orbited around a star in the Antares system, the Antarians were advocates of non-violence and peace. These alien species appeared in an episode of the animated TMNT series in 1989, where Donatello came across an Antarian family. The family included a couple named Klaatu and Barada, and they were traveling with their son Nikto in their spacecraft. We also learned a bit about American culture through them, and their distaste towards violence led them to create a device that would chain any aggressors until they promised to practice non-violence. Federation, also known as the Human Federation. This organization was a militant extraterrestrial government system that looked over several planets in the galaxy. In the original comic and animated series, the Federation was said to be the arch nemesis of the Triceraton Republic. They were so keen on destroying the Republic that they even went as far as to recruit a former Federation scientist, Professor Honeycutt, to work for them. Professor Honeycutt's mind was fitted into a robotic body after he got into a fatal accident and the Federation hoped to win with his help, but their attempt was thwarted by the Triceraton Republic as well as the Turtles. While the Triceratons headed to Earth along with Honeycutt, the Federation followed them but fell into trouble when Honeycutt created a virus to eradicate them. However, they were saved by the Triceraton Republic after they reorganized and offered them aid in order to establish peaceful relations between them. Malignoids Malignoids were extraterrestrial species ruled by their mother queen, Maligna, who used her power to steal resources from other worlds. These creatures were omnivorous in nature, producing a lethal form of honey that could paralyze a victim. They appeared as humanoid insects and carried spears with sharp blades as their preferred weapons. While malignoids were essentially Maligna's children, she was not attached to them in the slightest and viewed them as her pawns. She used her antennas to operate a hive mind through which she sent telepathic orders to the malignoids and sometimes even restricted their freedom to work independently. However, she could be dethroned if her antennas broke, as this would cause the malignoids to break free of her control. For the most part, the malignoids traveled from world to world and left behind huge sacks of malignoid larvae that would feed on the world's resources and eventually grow strong enough to overthrow the native population. A couple of popular malignoids were Skull and Bean, who were generals in Maligna's army. They were known for their intelligence and independence, and they were a higher class of malignoids than the rest due to their warrior status. Malignoids had tried to take over Earth numerous times, but the turtles and the mighty mutanimals managed to dodge their attacks every time. Eventually, their entire species was wiped out when Slash crashed their hive spaceship into the sun. Neutrinos Hailing from Dimension X, neutrinos were essentially a race of extra-dimensional humanoid aliens that had befriended the Ninja Turtles. They first appeared in an episode of the 1987 television series, and they could be easily identified by their sharp, pointy ears and eccentric hairstyles. While most Dimension X species were known for meddling in war and violence, neutrinos did not share these views. They were known for their reluctance towards violence, and their peaceful approach caused other Dimension X species to view them with contempt. However, neutrinos did not care much for their views and preferred to live a fun, joyful life where they seldom picked up any firearms. While they advocated for peace, a trio of neutrino mercenaries voiced by Clancy Brown were notorious for dabbling in violence. They were sent to infiltrate Milky's mind by belly bomb, but the turtles easily defeated these neutrinos before they could delve deep into Milky's thoughts. 
Princess Tribble, voiced by Tress McNeil. Princess Tribble was one of the neutrinos in the 1987 television series in an episode titled Four Turtles and a Baby. She appeared in the form of a child with dark black eyes and blonde hair. Tribble was sent to Earth by her parents while they were taken captive by Shredder and his companions. While Tribble was safe on Earth, her parents figured out a way to escape Shredder and come back to take Tribble to their home dimension. Polarisoids, first appearing in an episode of the 1987 TV series titled Camera Bugged. The Polarisoids hailed from a planet from the Polaris system. These alien species had green-blue skin and pale yellow eyes, as well as antennas poking from their heads. Polarisoids were primarily known for carrying a specialized camera that had the ability to shrink objects and trap them within images. A few known members of these species included Frip, Millimeter, F-Stop, and Say Cheese, and they later appeared in another episode titled Welcome Back Polarisoids. Rock Soldiers, also known as Stone Warriors. Rock Soldiers refer to an alien army of sentiment humanoids that hailed from Dimension X. They earned this nickname due to the rocky nature of their body, and Krang created them after he used his mutagen on rocks to breed an army of soldiers. Rock Soldiers first appeared in the 1987 cartoon and were portrayed as incredibly strong and durable creatures. However, they seemed to lack intelligence, and they mostly followed their superiors' commands and lived in a society that was hostile towards other species. These creatures followed a strict hierarchy, and one of the most popular commanders of their legion was General Treg. Currently, rock soldiers serve the exiled warlord Crank, but they have different origins in the IDW comics. In this version, the rock soldiers were genetically created by Baxter Stockman after he administered the mutagen to several soldiers who served in Krang's humanoid army in Dimension X. General Trag. General Trag was one of the most well-known rock soldiers, and he led their army under Krang's leadership. Voiced by Peter Renaday in the 1987 animated series, General Trag followed the Neutrenos as they crossed the Dimension X portal to arrive on Earth. But he was soon defeated by the Neutrinos as well as the Turtles and sent back through the same portal. In the IDW comics, Trag aided Krang in his attempt to conquer the Neutrinos' home planet. On the other hand, he was introduced as as a 20-foot-tall rock monster that spewed lava on his opponents in the 2012 TMNT cartoon. In this series, Krang brought Trag with him through the portal, but he stirred up so much trouble that Leatherhead had to drag him back to his homeworld. Trag was later seen guarding this portal when he got into a scuffle with the Ninja Turtles and was eventually defeated by Michelangelo. Sergeant Granader Sergeant Granader was General Trag's right-hand man and followed Trag on every mission. He traveled with Trag when he followed the neutrinos through the portal and even came back when the turtles defeated them and sent them right back. In the comic series, Granador announced an attack on the neutrino resistance bunker in order to capture Fugitoid and killed several innocent families that were surviving in this bunker. After demolishing it, Granador ordered a few rock soldiers to search for Fugitoid body and later realized that Fugitoid was none other than Honeycutt. He then followed Honeycutt to Earth but soon lost track of him. Like General Trag, Sergeant Granader appeared as a 20-foot-tall blue fire spewing rock monster in the 2012 cartoon series. Sons of Silence Not much is known about these mysterious entities that go by the name Sons of Silence, and they've only appeared in the Archie TMNT adventure comics. These creatures can be best described as extraterrestrial aliens, and they played a crucial role in saving Bebop and Rocksteady from being stuck underneath the sewers. Triceratons Famously known as the rivals of the Federation, Triceratons were alien species that resembled Triceratops and appeared in the TMNT comics, television series, and video games. These characters played a significant role in the 2003 animated series, where they were portrayed as a powerful race that hoped to conquer the entire galaxy. Triceratons boasted about their advanced technology, powerful government, and gladiator battles, and they started being hostile towards humans after a corrupt leader took over their species. After noticing their behavior towards humans, Earth decided to launch a nuclear attack on their planet, and their evil leader Xanormon was overthrown and replaced by a much more noble character, Traximus. In the 2012 animated series, the Triceraton Empire declared a battle on Earth 
and even clashed with Craig. The fight resulted in losses on both sides until the Triceraton fleet was finally defeated in the show's fourth season. Many notable Triceratons have appeared in the TMNT lore so far, and we shall now look at a few of them. Commander Mozar To begin with, Commander Mozar was one of the most powerful military commanders in the Triceraton Republic, and he can be best identified due to the numerous scars on his body. He worked as the right-hand man of the Triceraton leader, Xanarmon, and even led a mission to capture Professor Honeycutt in the Federation's territory. In the 2003 television series, Commander Mozar started questioning Xanarmon's tyranny and even began resenting his bloodlust. When Xanarmon's empire fell, Commander Mozar sided with Traximus and worked for his peaceful regime. In the 2012 TMNT series, Mozar was voiced by Michael Dorn and promoted to captain. He successfully led an attack on Earth, but the Ninja Turtles undid his actions by going back in time to prevent the attack from happening. In this alternate timeline, the Turtles ran into Mozar, preventing him from acquiring the Heart of Darkness. While he was promoted to Admiral, Mozar was soon demoted back to being a captain after his defeat, and he spent the rest of his story arc trying to get back his admiral title through any means possible. Traximus Zeno In the 2003 TMNT series, a Triceraton warrior named Traximus believed that their old virtues must be restored and he was soon thrown in the dungeons by the evil lord Xanarmon. Traximus came across Leonardo during his time in the dungeons, and the Ninja Turtle spared Traximus' life and taught him a lesson about kindness. This greatly impacted this warrior and he hoped to collect more warriors by facing them in the Battle Nexus tournament and then inspiring them to overthrow the current dictatorship. Across the story arc, Traximus convinced numerous warriors to join his resistance and even helped the Turtles save the captured Donatello. His efforts did not go in vain, and he eventually managed to overthrow Xanarmon's rule and ushered in a new age of peace in the Triceraton Republic. The 2012 TMNT series introduced a similar counterpart named Zeno, who was also imprisoned for opposing Xanarmon. Like Traximus, Zeno strived to overthrow Xanarmon in the series, but he only appeared in one episode to help the Turtles. Xanraman Zanmoran Prime leader Xanraman of the Triceraton Republic was a tyrannical ruler who often waged war against the Federation. He first appeared in the Mirage comic book, where he captured the Turtles as well as Professor Honeycutt. Eventually, Xanraman disappeared from these comics, and it was believed that his guards accidentally killed him until he reappeared in a later comic. In the 2003 TMNT series, Xanraman offered Professor Honeycutt all the privileges of of being a Triceraton citizen before forcing him to create a teleporter. In the meantime, the Turtles broke out of the Triceraton prison and rescued Honeycutt, after which Xanarmon declared an attack on Earth. Xanarmon almost destroyed Earth, but Donatello convinced him that Honeycutt wasn't on Earth to get him to retreat. Eventually, Xanarmon was overthrown by Traximus, and later he appeared in the 2012 series, where he failed to destroy Earth using the black hole generator. Zog In the Mirage comics, Zog was one of the two Triceratons left back on Earth and rescued by the Turtles. At this point, Zog had nearly lost his mind and kept mistaking the Turtles for Triceraton leaders. Sadly, he was killed by three mutated Shredders after he accidentally strayed far away on his own. In the 2003 series, Zog was teleported to Earth during the battle over Honeycutt's teleporter and he once again mistook the Turtles for his leader and sacrificed himself for them. The Turtles were always great grateful to Zog and kept him in their memory for a long time. In the 2012 television series, Zog was a soldier in the Triceraton Empire who traveled to Earth in quest of Krang and died after falling off the Statue of Liberty. Captain Zorax Captain Zorax was one of the highest ranking officers in the Triceraton Empire, and he appeared in an episode titled Night of the Dark Turtle. In that episode, Zorax acted as a captain of an invasion fleet that attacked Earth and declared the planet a part of the Triceraton Empire. However, the Ninja Turtles resisted this attack, and Leonardo fought Zorax but got defeated. While Zorax was on the verge of victory, Donatello convinced him that he was the ruler of Earth and that he had an army of animatronic dinosaurs working for him. Donatello even used Orukusaki's microblaster to intimidate Zorax, who eventually accepted his defeat and returned to the Triceraton homeworld. 
Azok. Azok was a Triceraton peace diplomat who firmly believed that the Triceraton and Styracodon conflict must end peacefully. In fact, he took it upon himself to travel to the Styracodons to negotiate a treaty, but he was double-crossed and thrown into prison. After cutting his horns off and gouging his eyes out, Azok was sentenced to a lifetime in the Royal Detention Center 17, where he came across Michelangelo about 32 years after his sentence began. Michelangelo was sent to prison after having an affair with a Styrocodon named Seri, and Azok was determined to free his new friend. Eventually, Azok sacrificed his own life to help Michelangelo escape, and the latter ran into a bunch of Triceraton soldiers who revealed that they had sneaked into Styrocodon territory to free Azok. Now that he had died, the soldiers returned to Triceraton alongside Michelangelo, who had to clear his name and prove that he played no role in Azok's death. Monza Ram. Monza Ram was the leader of the Triceraton All-Star Gladiator team that served Xanarmon during his regime. He was often sent to war under Xanarmon's orders, and his All-Star team was once asked to battle the Ninja Turtles in the Triceraton Arena. Sadly, the Turtles defeated Monza Ram's team during this fight, and Xanarmon imprisoned them as a punishment for their failure. Interestingly, Monza Ram's name can be rearranged to form Xanarmon's name, which is quite a shame since the Prime Leader mistreated him at any given opportunity. After Xanarmon's regime ended, Monza Ram was freed by Traximus's resistance forces and he eventually joined hands with the Turtle. Boss Zuko Boss Zuko was a Triceraton crime lord who appeared in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Fast Forward, especially when the Turtles had a run-in with the intergalactic outlaw Torben Zix. When Zix commented on how things in the Triceraton Republic had changed, he mentioned Boss Zuko as an example of those mobsters who had ruined the place. Zix used to work with Zuko, but he had betrayed him several times or even incurred heavy debts that Boss Zuko had strived to collect over time. A few unproduced episodes of this series were set to reintroduce the Utram Shredder and give Boss Zuko a new appearance where he took over the body of a Triceraton. General Zira Voiced by Kate Mulgrew, General Zira was the first prominent female Triceraton in the TMNT universe. She appeared in the 2012 television series where she traveled all the way to Earth's Cretaceous period and enslaved dinosaurs to excavate Cronite. Zira hoped to use Cronite in time travel, but her plan was thwarted by the Turtles, Bebop, and Rocksteady. Utroms were alien species that resembled the brain, and they played different roles across the TMNT universe. For instance, the Mirage Comics version of Utroms were benevolent entities, while the IDW comic version was that of evil entities striving towards forming an empire. In the 2003 series, Utroms were an advanced race of primarily benevolent aliens. They spent thousands of years waiting for human technology to reach them while dealing with and eventually exiling a notorious criminal, Utram Shrell, aka Shredder. In the 2012 animated series, Utrams used to be a prestigious race until a scientist named Krang discovered a mutagen that helped him gain psychic powers. Krang used these powers to enslave the Utrams, who fought back and strived to free themselves from his mind control. They also hid the components of the Krang black hole generator to ensure that the device didn't fall into the wrong hands and became friends with Professor Honeycutt. Let's have a look at a few prominent Utrams that have appeared across the TMNT universe and wreaked havoc on Earth. Krang. To begin with, Krang or General Krang was one of the main antagonists of the comics as well as the animated series. He was initially a scientist who stumbled across a mutagen produced by the native Krathatragon. By the native Krathatragon worms in Dimension X, Krang used his mutagen to mutate into Krang Prime and used his newfound psychic abilities to create a hive mind and enslave his own kind. Korriban. Korriban appeared in the fourth volume of the Mirage comics, where he arrived on Earth and declared himself an ambassador for the Utram Confederation. In his capacity as an ambassador, Korriban addressed the United Nations on live television and told them all about Utram's plans concerning Earth. Mr. Mortu. Essentially spelt as Utram backwards, Mortu was a Utram commander, stranded on Earth when Shirel crashed a prison ship in Japan. Mr. Mortu spent years on Earth and was stationed at their Tokyo headquarters before moving to the TCRI building in New York City. After Splinter suffered some injuries, Mortu brought him to the TCRI building and cared for him before finally meeting the Turtles. 
he told the turtles all about the Utram's origins and how they ended up on Earth by using a communal mind pod. But their conversation was interrupted when Baxter Stockman hacked their system and trapped the turtles and Splinter in the simulation. While Shredder began destroying the building, Mortu was transported back to his home world, but not before leaving a gift behind for Splinter. Mortu later returned to help the turtles and Splinter got to safety and oversaw the tribunal meeting where Utram Shirell was sentenced to exile. He later attended the O'Neill Jones wedding where he was treated as an honored guest. Professor Obligato Known for having a reputation as a brilliant Utram scientist, Professor Obligato graced several pages of the TMNT comics where his life and death were illustrated in the back pages of many issues. Slasher First appearing in the video game TMNT 2 Battle Nexus, Slasher's body was slashed when Shredder declared an attack on his home planet. However, Slasher survived this attack and went on to become one of the most skilled mercenaries in the entire multiverse. He was unaware that Shredder's attack had turned him into this evil monster, so he decided to work for him. Slasher was known for his signature weapon, a sickle called Gengetsu, which could drain people's energy and feed it to him. He also donned three different costumes that were orange, black, and white. Dr. Xenos Dr. Xenos was an Utram scientist who appeared in the Mirage comics, where he was trapped in a blast at the TCRI building. After being abandoned on Earth when the rest of the Utrams departed for their homeworld, Leatherhead discovered that Dr. Xenos helped him recover. At this time, Leatherhead was still a regular alligator, and he found Dr. Xenos in the sewers and cared for him. Later, Dr. Xenos was seen playing chess with Splinter but only had a brief appearance. Shirelle the Utram Shredder Shredder, also known as Shirelle the Utram Shredder, was one of the most vicious antagonists of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. He has made his way to every TMNT media, where he is either the arch enemy of Splinter or the Turtles. He appears in the form of a muscular man with a suit of armor that is inspired by a samurai's clothing. As the Utram Shredder, Shirelle gained a reputation as one of the Utram's most notorious enemies, and he once caused trouble while being transported in a prisoner spacecraft. Shredder managed to crash the spacecraft on Earth, thereby forcing all the Utrams to go into hiding on Earth while he used the Utram exosuit to gain a new identity. He then founded a massive criminal empire on Earth and even managed to establish contact with supernatural entities and recruit them into his organization, the Foot Clan. As the Turtles became aware of the Foot Clan, they came across Shredder and hoped to defeat him, while the Utrams hoped to do the same. Eventually, the Turtles teamed up with Splinter to defeat Featurel and sent him to his home world, where he was found guilty of several crimes and exiled from their society. Utram Council The Utram Council was essentially a political body that oversaw the Utram race in both the 2003 as well as the 2012 series. In the 2003 series, this council consisted of a trio of mind-like Utrams who navigated their ship while traveling from their home world to Earth. The council regarded their people's safety as their first and foremost priority, and Captain Mortu and the Utram's human guardians were considered inferior to this council. Another Utram Council came into existence when they faced the issue of dealing with Shirelle, and they ultimately formed a committee that exiled him to a frozen asteroid. However, the 2012 series depicted this council's members as independent members who were not linked together and were named after chess pieces. Bishop Bishop was one of the critical members of the Utram Council, and he appeared in the 2012 series where he designed the Utram Krang android body. He typically wore sunglasses, spoke in English, and boasted of having incredible combat skills, and he did not shy away from a good fight, even though violence went against the Utram Code. Bishop later allied with the Turtles and helped them in their endeavors to prevent Triceraton from activating the Black Hole Generator. The first of many missions they embarked on together. When the Turtles traveled to the past to prevent Earth's destruction, they were surprised to learn that Bishop was friends with Professor Honeycutt. Later, Bishop helped the Turtles defeat his former brother, Knight, and locate the remaining parts of the Black Hole Generator. Over time, Bishop established himself as a new owner of the TCRI and worked closely with the Earth Protection Force until their alliance ended. Queen 
The queen was one of the most important members of the Utram species and was inarguably the highest ranking member of the Utram council. She piloted an Utram droid similar to the Mrs. Campbell androids that roamed freely on Earth due to Krang's actions. Krang's subprime eventually abducted the queen after the council decided to help the turtles look for the pieces of the black hole generator. Luckily for her, the turtles came to her rescue and she helped them defeat Krang's subprime and protect Earth. When Neutralizer attacked the council, her Utram droid suffered great damage, just like the rest of the council members. Her character was voiced by Cassandra Peterson and she was often seen wearing a tiara in her base Utram form. Rook, voiced by Kate Mikuchi. Rook was another member of the Utram Council, well known for her knowledge of Utram law. While she was not much of a fighter, she had a lot of insight into the inner workings of the Utram Council, and she even designed the exosuits that were later stolen by Krang Subprime. Krang Subprime used these suits to disguise his exosuit as Irma Langenstein, and even mass-produced Irma bots. In fact, Rook was enraged with him for stealing her designs and betraying the Utram. Unfortunately, Rook was robbed of her designs while Krang gained them in addition to his combat ability. Eventually, Rook's exosuit was also decapitated when Neutralizer waged war against the Utram Council. Pawn. Pawn was the last member of the Utram Council, and he was the only one not to get an Utram droid body disguised as a human being. His appearance could be described as that of an uncovered Utram droid, with an additional curly mustache and a quirky French accent. Like the other Utrams, Pawn was quite surprised when he learned that the black hole generator piece hidden on Eon had managed to corrupt all its inhabitants. He then wholeheartedly agreed with the decision to reveal the locations of the hidden elements to the turtles so they could deal with it. Pawn was sadly attacked by Neutralizer, who almost fed on him, but he somehow managed to survive in the end. Knight Krang Subprime The Knight, also known as Krang Subprime, used to be a member of the Utram Council until he betrayed them to side with Krang. He was voiced by Gilbert Gottfried, and he had a purple robotic body that had battle scars all over. Knight gained a reputation as one of the greatest spy masters in Dimension X, and he often appeared in the form of Irma Langstein to April O'Neil to keep tabs on her. The Knight even banished a version of Krang after he acted in notorious ways, but he later sided with the same outlaw to defeat the Turtles. The Knight had a reputation for being resilient, as he had bounced back from several fatal situations. He was also known for his rivalry with Bishop, who once viewed Knight as a brother, but eventually came to hate him and gave him the nickname Sub Subprime. Moreover, this character played an instrumental role in procuring the black hole generator from Professor Honeycutt and handing it over to Krang. Zip Zip was essentially an alien from Dimension X, and this tiny creature only appeared in the animated TMNT series from the 80s. As he fed himself, we could see the Zip grow in size, and he also consumed metal, especially a rare metal known as Rigidium, to restore himself to his tiny size. Salamandrians Salamandrians were a race of humanoid aliens that were a cross between newts and salamanders, and they were notoriously known for fighting against the Triceraton Empire. Their bodies were larger than typical turtles, and they were a muscular warrior race that took joy in fighting battles. While they were civil to each other, they did not extend kindness towards other species and were known for being hostile and chanting Roka Roka at them. They also got into violent fights with the Krang, and the two species were matched in terms of their technology. Recently, Lord Dreg's armada attacked the entire Salamandrian species and blackmailed them into betraying the turtles. However, this species refused to give up on their allies and Lord Dreg eventually let them go after realizing they couldn't be forced into submission. Salamandrians had some unique gestures wherein a handshake was a sign of hostility, while touching each other's noses was an attempt to kiss. They had their own language that sounded a lot like roaring, and a few famous Salamandrians are as follows. Kvathric or the Neutralizer Kvathric, also known as the Neutralizer, had black skin with an orange belly, and he was inspired by Marvel Comics's Punisher. Just like this character, Kvathric had one mission in life, which was to completely eradicate the Krang, even if it meant harming innocent souls along the way. He was known for hoarding several advanced blades, explosives, and blasters, and he once fed on a Krang's body in battle. After arriving on Earth, this character was thrown into prison at the Krang detention facility, where 
Donatello accidentally freed him. The Neutralizer used this opportunity to attack the Turtles and even partnered with Slash to free Krang and steal their devices. However, Slash soon grew weary of this fight and switched to the Turtles' side to fight against the Neutralizer in the end. While he no longer had his partner, the Neutralizer continued with his mission and tried to blow up a Krang walker, but he was unaware that he was using a malfunctioning teleporter. As he triggered the explosion, his body was surrounded by strange energies, and it is unknown how this blast affected him in the end. Commander Gathraka, or Sal Commander, nicknamed Sal Commander by Michelangelo, Commander Gathraka led a trio of Salmandrian fighters against the Triceraton Armada. He was a veteran warrior who had seen many battles, suffered innumerable scars, and had almost lost his left eye. Sal Commander was quite adept at hand-to-hand -hand combat, but his preferred choice of weapon was his cybernetic tail with a spiked club at the end. He once crash-landed on a methane ice moon with Lieutenant Egethba after accidentally clashing with the Turtles. While the Lieutenant wanted to attack the Turtles outrightly, Commander Gathraka tried to sort things out peacefully before a misunderstanding gave way to a fight. They eventually sorted things out and became friends before taking their leave, and Gathraka later accompanied Egethba to Dimension X. Here they met with the Krang to propose an alliance against the Triceratons, but they were wrongfully imprisoned and held held captive. They came across the turtles again and worked with them to rescue the Utram Council's queen from the Krang's clutches. During this fight against the Krang, Commander Gathraka was captured by Lord Dreg, who ordered him to betray the turtles or face the destruction of their world. While he initially considered betraying his new friends, he soon realized that Drag was lying to them, and he then continued to aid the turtles in their battle against Dreg and the Krang. Lieutenant Egithba or Mona Lisa. Lieutenant Egithba was a female salamandrian, and she was also known as Mona Lisa after Raphael developed a crush on her. She appeared in the 1984 cartoon series as a human being mutated into an alien. While the 2012 series introduced her as an alien, she typically stayed by her commanding officer Gothraka and used lasers and blades to fight against her opponents. Igithba was known to be quite hostile towards the turtles, and she once even suggested wiping them out before seeing sense and establishing cordial relations with them. Her grit and fighting spirit caught Raphael's eyes, and he strived to impress her until until he finally won over her. He later nicknamed her Mona Lisa, and the Salamandrians and Turtles worked together to look for a crashed Triceraton space mine. After parting ways, they did not have to wait too long to run into each other again when Gathraka was imprisoned by Krang Subprime. During this meeting, Mona paired with the Turtles to rescue the Utram Queen and spend more time with Raphael before they had to go their own ways once again. She did express her desire to spend more time with him if possible, and she was reunited with him during a fight against Lord Dreg. Sadly, Mona briefly considered betraying the Turtles for Dreg, and this action hurt Raphael to a great extent. To make up for her brief lapse in judgment, she declared that she loved Raphael and joined him in battle when one of Dreg's minions attacked her. Raphael could not bear to see her in pain, and he lunged into an attack on Dreg while Mona made a full recovery. After reconciling with her lover, Mona sadly had to part ways again, while Raphael returned to Earth and expressed how much he missed her. Styracodons Appearing in the Mirage comics, Styracodons were a race of aliens much like Triceratons in the sense that they resembled humanoid Styracosauruses, also known as Styruses. This species originated from the planet Nurgostu and had quite a violent history with the Triceratons. They were ruled by a governing body known as the Styracodon Imperium, and they often allied with the Protokeratons in their fight against the Triceratons. Donatello once discovered that these two species originated from diverging evolutionary lines, but essentially from the same base species. The two most commonly appearing Styracodons were Cerulicus and Celis, but not much is known about their personalities or their roles in the series. Vreen Ruled by Lord Dreg, Vreen was a hive-minded race of insectoid aliens hailing from Sectoid 1. These aliens completely submitted to Lord Dreg and only took action under his commands. In fact, they were incapable of accomplishing anything independently and they failed to take any initiative to advance as a race. Thank you. You saved us.
Eons, known for being one of the most ancient creatures in the TMNT universe, Eons were winged creatures from the planet of Zavadel. They were known for forbidding technology on their homeworld, and the Utron Bishop felt this would be the ideal place to hide a fragment of the Heart of Darkness. Sadly, the Eons were quite fascinated by this technology, and they started worshipping the fragment to the point where they locked their soul star and turned corrupt. They assumed demonic forms and tried to attack the turtles and the Triceratons when they traveled to Zavadel to retrieve the fragment. While the Triceratons got their hands on the fragment, April O'Neil helped the Eons locate the Soul Star and return to their pure form. Dagons Dagons were amphibious creatures who resided within the deep cosmic ocean of Veruna, and they appeared in the 2012 TMNT series. These creatures were known for their honor and nobleness and were one of the Utram's oldest allies. In fact, the Utram Council trusted the Dagons to take care of another fragment of the Heart of Darkness for several centuries. The Dagons took extraordinary measures to ensure the fragment's safety and erected a tent where anyone who wanted to get the fragment had to first face an aquatic beast named Cthuga. Initially, the Dagons were quite hostile towards the turtles and their allies when they showed up to retrieve the fragment, but they eventually allowed them to prove their worth and secure it. Varuna Sea Monster Much like the Loch Ness Monster, this creature can be best described as a sea monster that resided deep within the cosmic ocean of Varuna. Krang had managed to tame this wild creature into acting like a guardian for his underwater bases and use it as a mode of transport for the Dagon. Ice Dragons First appearing in an episode titled The Moons of Thalos 3, Ice Dragons can be best described as gigantic lizards carved out of ice. In their first appearance, they launched an attack on the Ninja Turtles, Mona Lisa and Sal Commander, and breathed ice all over them. At a young age, ice dragons could fly, but they lost this ability as they grew older and gained more strength. These creatures could climb over any surface and blow cold, freezing blue flames that had the ability to freeze anything in their path. Spasmosaurus Living on one of the moons of Thalos 3, Spasmosaurus was a gigantic alien monster with four mouths and numerous tentacles flailing from his body. He first appeared in the Mirage comics and made a brief appearance in the 2003 comics, where the turtles fought him in the Triceraton arena and defeated him by targeting his weak spot. Cthuga, a known ally of the Ninja Turtles, the Cthuga was an ancient creature that lived in the bottomless pits of the cosmic ocean of Varuna. He only appeared in an episode of the 2012 TMNT series titled The Cosmic Queen, where he served the Dagons. This aquatic beast guarded a fragment of the Heart of Darkness, and he had sharp teeth that served as deadly weapons for anyone who attempted to get too close to these fragments. Cthuga had an elongated head with sharp teeth, blue eyes, and several tendrils that grew from his head. While not much is known about this sea monster, it is said that Hildrala can summon this creature by just releasing a loud, shrilling scream. Zack's Bees Hailing from Sectoid 1, Zack's Bees were gigantic bees with the ability to immobilize a being with their sting. They looked like regular bees except they were deadlier and had glowy, lime green eyes. They had four wings and seven legs and appeared in the 2012 television series in an episode titled The Evil of Dreg. Scorponoid, also originating from Sectoid 1. Scorponoid was an alien scorpion raised in Lord Dreg's castle. He was Dreg's favorite pet, and he resided in a pit underneath the castle. Besides being his pet, Scorponoid also acted as a weapon and a means of transportation for Lord Dreg. He typically used his tail, claws, teeth, and venom stinger to attack people, and Dreg would often throw people in this pit to get rid of them. The Scorponoid tried to attack Leo, Mikey, Casey, and Raph, when they were thrown into the pit, but they managed to escape with some help from April. When Raph got into a fight with Dreg, Scorponoid attempted to attack Raph, but the Ulixes stepped in and blasted him with a laser beam. After this cruel monster was incapacitated, Lord Dreg strived to avenge his death by following the Ninja Turtles to Magdemar. Toka Toka was a kaiju-sized turtle from the planet Magnumar, and it was known as one of the six cosmic monsters in the TMNT universe. 
Toka was quite a unique entity, and it happened to be a hermaphrodite, that is, a male as well as a female. Toka had the ability to breathe fire and fly, and it also raised an alien turtle named Chompy Picasso. While Toka was not especially known as the wittiest creature in the room, the animated version of this character was quite intelligent and eloquent. It was often affiliated with the Foot Clan, and it especially played a prominent role in the 2012 animated series as a guardian of one of the fragments of the Heart of Darkness. While this titular Ninja Turtles have won over the audience's heart, all these alien creatures and mutants have played some part in making the franchise such a huge success. From Utrams, such as Krang and Korriban, to Triceratons, such as Commander Mozar and Zeno, these creatures are littered across the entire TMNT universe, and we want to know your favorites in the comments.